I am not the impression. Okay, I'm turning the camera on, everybody. Thank you. Okay, the time is 3.30. We're going to call the Public Safety and Emergency Services Committee for Thursday, November 17, 2022, to order. Uh, this meeting is being live streamed, so we'll be careful with the microphones. And let's see, we're going to silence our cell phones and tablets, please. And at this time, if you'll join me, to pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please. Fine. Here. Begenga. Here. Ellard. Here. Benjion. Here. Sierra. Sassy. Here. Rommel. Here. Okay, first up, we have uh, Commissioner Casey, letter A, request supplemental appropriation of $647,182 for emergency services portion of the fiscal year 2022 State Homeland Security Program for the period 9-1-22 to 8 25 Funding will be used for personnel costs, for emergency management planner, response team planner, interoperability communications equipment, supplemental consultant fees for revision of emergency response plans, EMS training equipment and medical supplies, emergency readiness kits from Orange County residents, strengthen countywide law record management and data sharing application, purchase other equipment and supplies in support of Orange County's homeland security capabilities, including threats of terrorism and other hazards. Can I have a motion, please? I'll move that motion. I'll highlight that for us. Uh, this is a recurring grant. We get 75% of it, the sheriff gets about 25% of it. There are certain categories we have to spend it in and we break it up between um, recurring costs and new equipment. Uh, I know we're looking at a, a vehicle ramming barrier system. That's a new threat that's out there. A lot of the places that have parades and street festivals are forced to block it off with DPW sand trucks. So there's some stuff out there where it's man portable and you set up in the road prevents vehicles from entering that area. So uh, that'll be one of the things we'll be purchasing with this. Uh, there's a couple other pieces of equipment in there, but it's something that we get uh, every year to break it up between, like I said, recurrent costs that would normally be under taxation and some new equipment. Okay, we have any questions for the commissioner? Perhaps. Um, commissioner, I think I was reading, and this, this also includes like uh, gatherings. Is, that, is this the one that the grant would get? So let's say we're having a soft targets. weekend, soft targets. Is that all in part of that? Yeah, and uh, the, the sheriff's office spent some money on that too, and that's the barrier system right. would, would so. fit into that. So, yes, it's, it's you have to. There's certain categories they want you to hit. And we look at this system. It's a nice system. It's it can, each piece is like 50 pounds, and you click them together. And if you hit it, it digs in the asphalt, kind of flips the vehicle over. So, it's uh, I think it'll be you know, and it's another piece of equipment that. Most municipalities or police departments would not buy. So we buy it for the county and it's deployable out to the Village of Goshen and Monroe and people like that. They want to use it's contained in a trailer and can be loaned out and deployed. So now we have equipment in the trailer and is there it's, it comes with its own trailer. Uh, we have vehicles that can move it, or now what we've been doing like with our VMS signs, you know, come get them. Everybody's yeah. got pickup trucks and it's not particularly heavy, but you need a you know, like you have 350 type yeah. operation pull it. So thank you. Yep. Any other question? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So carried unanimous. Next we'll move to letter B. Request to accept and appropriate funds from the US Department of Homeland Security in the amount of one hundred and forty one thousand two hundred dollars for fiscal year twenty twenty hazardous materials grant program for the period 10 one twenty two eight thirty one twenty three. Funds will be utilized to build and sustain New York State's regional model to build and sustain hazmat response capabilities. Orange County will manage the purchase of specialty equipment across Upper Hudson Valley hazmat, regional partnering counties, Sullivan, Ulster, Rockland hazmat teams. Legislative request 260. Motion so moved. Second. Sassy and Seganga. So this is a uh, also a recurring grant. Uh, we use the funds to offset the cost of equipment and operating expenses within our HAZMAT team. Uh, as you could see, it's a regional partnership between four counties. Uh, we are the administering agency, so we essentially accept it and then we, we run the grant. 
Um, and then we split it up pretty much equally between the, the four counties. Um, but uh, it's a great, uh, it's a good grant. The Kevin will tell you anything fire related costs X amount more than any other regular equipment. When you call it hazmat, it's even more expensive. So um, it, the equipment we buy is really costly and this, this grant helps us also. Do we have any questions for the deputy commissioner? I attended a hazmat training at my firehouse Tuesday night and by Wayne Deputy Coordinator 3610. His yeah. name is slipping my Wayne. mind. Wayne yeah. did a phenomenal job. Yeah, unfortunately, he's uh, FDNY retired, but uh, so from hazmat. He's a scientist, basically. Everything around the county has a volunteer under if any staff. Everybody should know he's phenomenal. Any questions? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So carried unanimous. And move to letter C, request to accept and appropriate funds from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security in the amount of $149,980 for fiscal year 2020 Technical Rescue and Urban Search and Rescue Grant Program for the period 10 one to 8 23 Funds will be utilized for fire services and response teams that provide technical rescue and USAR related services through equipment, exercise training, and planning projects. A motion, I'll make that motion. Uh, this grant is a little different than the hazmat in, in, uh, in essence because it is a competitive grant. So this grant we have to apply for every year. Uh, we're fortunate uh, due to the status of our team within the state. We have a very good team, uh, very skilled. And again, we're, we're fortunate to have the resources from the city that are firemen there, that are members of our team. Uh, they volunteer with our team. So uh, because of that, we've been fortunate to get this basically every other year. This is the primary funding source for our technical rescue team. Um, so it'll be used to purchase uh, tech rescue equipment. Um, and our teams, when we talk tech rescue, that's collapse rescue, trench rescue, confined space, and um, low rescue, plenty of rope. So when you see the rescues in the woods, uh, somebody that's up on Hawk's Nest recently, they're Close up there. Cornwall. Yeah, over there. Cornwall's got a great team too, but we partner with them sometimes. Uh, but uh, these are the guys that go and do that, men and women that go and do that. Hey, any questions for Vinny? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So carried unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Next up, we have the Sheriff's Office. The under Sheriff Weedy and Captain Kennedy are with us. These are annual resolutions so that they can apply for the various grants that come up. So letter A, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, District Attorney's Office, and the County Attorney's Office and the Departments of Probation and Emergency Services, Emergency Management to submit grant applications to the United States Department of Justice, Homeland Security, and New York State Departments of Homeland Security and Emergency Services and Transportation for law enforcement and public safety and emergency services communication purposes. I have a motion. So moved. Second. So, so it's just an annual thing to do so we can apply for the different types of grants to offset the cost of operations and purchasing equipment. Yeah, and it saves you from having to come back here every month for each individual grant. Yeah. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So carries unanimous. Uh, next up, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, District Attorney's Office, the County Attorney's Office, and the Departments of Probation, Social Services, Mental Health, Medical Examiner's Office, and Emergency Services, Emergency Management to submit applications for grant programs offered by the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services. Motion, please. Second. Second. Mr. Chairman, should those have legislative request numbers or are they just the last two don't have any on them? Yeah, I think it's because it, it rolls. This is just yes. requesting uh, permission so that they can apply for grants. They used to have to come to us for every grant they wanted to apply for, and it became burdensome and, and it was time sensitive in many cases. So that's why we decided to do this several years ago so that each department could apply for the grants that they thought they had a shot at obtaining. So would, that have, would we be voting on that again if they're granted? When they're granted, right. we when accept the granted, funds. they come back, it's a right. Okay, yeah. thank it you. It just allows us to apply yeah. for them. Right. Anybody else? Any questions? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried unanimous. 
Letter B, request to accept and appropriate funding from New York State Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services with K-9 Division EDC Maintenance and Supplies, K-9 Training Equipment, $6,000, legislative request number 270. Motion, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Gander, is that like that? Yep, it's to offset the cost for electronic explosive detecting canines um, for their training and maintenance and things like that. Is there a new dog or existing? Pretty existing. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So carried unanimous. Letter C, request to accept and appropriate funding from New York State Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services for new explosive detection canine and vehicle. $50,000, legislative request number 271. So make that motion. Everybody want to sponsor that? Sure. Like everybody <laughs> spoke at once. So we'll put all sponsor on that. Oh, like that. That's for a new explosive detecting canine to replace Sergeant Palin's dog who passed away. Sorry, yeah. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Quick question. I'm sorry, Mr. Right. Chair. We got a problem, I guess, with the training facility out there. Yes, that's been. Are we correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. The company's been out there. They yeah. made emergency repairs and we're good. Uh -oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So risk management took a look at it and we're good to go. Super. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So carried unanimous. Next, a uh, motion to discuss the canine uh, corrections report. Please. I make that motion. Second. I'm the first captain. Sure. Our facility head count this morning was 312 inmates, 80 of which were ICE detainees. Our current ICE revenue, our total revenue to date, $5,172,932. If there's anything else in the report you want to discuss, we'll go over with you. Anybody have questions for the captain? Okay, you're off the hook easy. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll move on. A uh, motion to discuss the sheriff's report. Please. I'll make that. I'll second. Do you want to highlight the sheriff? Uh, a couple of things is if you look at the training unit, uh, we hosted a bunch of different trainings. Uh, for multiple agencies, we conducted training, uh, active shooter response training for Town Montgomery and Village of Walden, as well as our new SSDs. Uh, we also hosted and instructed an instructor development course, which also had uh, Orange County Probation, Town of Walkdale PD, um, deputies, and correction staff. Under K9, we have a, a, an academy going on right now, and I think one of the things that's important to know is we have actually a dog team from Vermont that heard about our canine training program and they, they sent them down here for their their certification, which I think is it's pretty unique and it's easy that in house, right? Yes. And you also were you you were involved in that boat season drill too, didn't you run that? Yes, but that was November. So um, I don't know this past month. Yeah, I should talk about this one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I remember reading about it. Yes. Okay, and can you just update everybody on the body cam project? I know that's uh, fairly new. At least yep, the body cams are, are out. Um, they're in use, all three shifts. Um, all the pertinent deputies that are supposed to be assigned them have them. We have correction staff that's going to start using them as well. Um, sergeants and the ERT guys for corrections will start to use them. Okay. And they're working well? System is working well. Staffing is an issue to maintain all the requests and data that you have to download and go through. Or How did you solve the problem with when everybody's in the station and someone like tries to put their gun in their locker or clean it and it doesn't trigger all the cameras? How did you figure that out? Or did they turn, turn body cams off? Every, when, <laughs> when you're in the station? Yes. Okay. Body cams are off in the station. But the way they work is if you draw your firearm, it'll activate the right. body cams in the air or a taser and turn the taser on. So they have a procedure for when they can test their taser, make sure it doesn't have to be hot again. Otherwise, there's just a lot of data and footage that we don't need. We right. have to go through and redact and delete. And you have someone on the command staff runs that program <laughs> for the st storage and accessibility? Well, we have a sergeant, but he's been deployed and he's going to be out for six months. So we have other people trying to fill that gap. We still have that lieutenant spot that we're trying to get to do it. So Sergeant Frank is in charge of that program, but he's deployed. In the yes. Okay. Any questions? How's our um, pistol um, permit process going since they lifted 
And I know there's still some things that are still being challenged. So we're full ahead. Uh, we have a new program in place. We've been running that new course, which is compliant with this new standard. And uh, Captain McGovern has been reviewing pistol commits and sending them through. So okay. we've a lot of progress. I know when so we stopped it, there it was gave a us lot an opportunity of to really catch up. So we're good. Okay, good. Thank you. Anybody else? Questions? Comments? All right. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Probation Director Davidian with us. Number three, request to accept and appropriate funds from New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services to offset the costs associated with the provision of certified pretrial services, including but not limited to screening, assessments, supervision, and reporting provided in the enacted fiscal year 2022-2023. New York State budget for the period of 4122 to 33123, $842,934. Legislative request number 272. So motion. Second. I'll highlight that for us, Director. I, I feel very fortunate that whenever I seem to appear before the committee, I come bearing gifts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the original thought was that in the 2022-23 uh, state budget, Governor had set aside $10 million for pretrial services throughout New York State. The thought was that the majority of that money would be going to New York City. In September, she expanded a pool of money from 10 million to 20 million and excluded New York City from that money. So the Division of Criminal Justice Services started a formula based on arraignments conducted in counties with a floor of $60,000 uh, for smaller counties up to, and I can be honest, I don't remember what the top grant is, but ours came in at 842,000 and change. Um, I thought there was a mistake with the comma because I was expecting somewhere around 84 to 100,000. So when I saw 842,000, I was like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> so uh, working with budget with the county executive's office, what we've decided to do is we can actually roll these funds going forward. So we've really developed a five to six year plan where we'll fund one full probation officer, probably actually split that caseload in half east to west to handle all our pretrial cases. Right now we're sitting at about 60 to 65 active pretrial cases at any point in time, but the number's gone up substantially in the last couple of years. And what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to do more assessments on those individuals. A lot of times pretrial cases just come in with report to probation. So what we'll do is we'll do full assessments on those cases and actually try to have conditions imposed that will help us get ahead of the curve, maybe mental health counseling, alcohol, substance abuse counseling, drug testing. Uh, we also have allocated additional money for GPS units, which would be monitored passively, but at least if there was an incident, we'd be able to track down where the individual was at any point in time. Again, uh, using the $842,000, we're actually looking at more of a five to six year plan than just a one shot deal. Uh, my information from the Office of Probation Correctional Alternatives is that they think there may be some recurring funding but it'll be nowhere near the degree that this was. So are you gonna expand the staff or use it to pay for existing staff? For actually right now we have one person doing the pretrial work half time, we'll extend that to a full person. Okay. All right. I, I, this is off topic, but can you just tell us about the use of your body cams in your department and how that's working? We are in the final stages of negotiating actual policy and a memo an MOA with the union. As a matter of fact, we met with the HR this morning and we're down to the last two details. So we're hoping that they'll be deployed no later than December 15th at this point in time. So is everybody trained on them already? Everyone's been trained. Okay. And now your entire staff is not armed though, correct? Uh, 40, 46 out of current 55 are. Okay. But we're going to issue body cams even to those other nine on, aren't on the staff because they still do have tasers and pepper spray. Right. Okay. Anybody have any questions, Kathy? I do. I have a couple. Um, just reading this on the letter and so forth, did we actually receive the payment? Because it said the payment was going to come in on October 31st. It did. And, and for some strange reason, it came in two pieces of $400,000. Like 416 and 407 didn't come as 842 altogether, but we did receive it already. Okay, and is this money something that has to be used by March? Does well, it say that to... it's for the budget period of April 1st, 22 through March of 23? That was our, our question as well as probation directors throughout the state. We had a meeting with the Office of Probation and Correctional Alternatives, and the direction was that they're not going to come look for any unspent money 
on April 1st of 23 so that we can roll that money forward. Okay, if you roll it forward, though, wouldn't that put you at less a chance of getting next year's grant if you didn't use what they given you initially? From, again, from what I've been told by OPCA, no, because if there's any additional monies, it'll be new monies, not based on what's been used and not. Okay, been used. so they're not going to look at it and say, we gave you this and you didn't use it in that period, so we're not going to give you the substantial amount, well, not the substantial, but the sequential amount afterwards. Not to the best of my knowledge, not supposed to be an issue. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. But the county attorney's office reviewed that, right? With respect to those issues? I didn't, I, we didn't speak about that. I know that we, Mr. Davidian did speak with budget and other departments to go over all this before we, they decided to use the money to spend in that matter. There was a subsequent conference, uh, conference call with Office of Probation, uh, Correctional Alternatives, OPCI, and COPA, Council Probation Administrators, and that question was posed by probably eight or nine of us. And it, we were told that the reason they put the end date on that money is for state budgetary reasons that they don't expect us to spend it by that point in time. Well, I mean, it's a year budgeting and they mm -hmm. give it to you, you know, less than four months, five months left. Okay, thank you. Okay, as long as everybody's satisfied. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, we'll call the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So carried unanimous. I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, and that'll conclude this meeting. Motion to adjourn, please. Second. We are adjourned.